<laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm here to talk about sad stuff. Specifically, really a cheer for sad stuff? I'll take it. We'll absolutely take it. Specifically, a song so sad that some people feared that just listening to it would cause you to literally kill yourself. Sorry, spoiler alert, this is gonna be a little bit of a downer. And <laughs> so I don't mean kill yourself like in the I'm a punk and I would rather kill myself than listen to an entire Taylor Swift album kind of way, no, no, no. No, there were and likely still are people who fear that there's a song in the world that will cause you to feel such anguish that upon hearing it, you will become a suicide risk. So the song, I'm gonna refer to it by its translated English name of Gloomy Sunday because Hungarian is a really hard language and I could only spend so much time watching YouTube pronunciation lessons. But I did learn how to say the author's name, which is Reju Shuresh. And to understand why Gloomy Sunday became so associated with depression and suicide, it might help to understand Shuresh and his often difficult and ultimately tragic life. Shuresh was born in 1889 in Budapest and grew up in a city that was at the time going through sort of a cultural explosion. Budapest in the early 20th century was bohemian, this kind of multicultural melting pot, and it was an art artistic hub. By the time he was an adult, he'd found his place in this community. Having taught himself to play piano, he found employment at the Kispipa restaurant, where regulars included other working class Jews, prostitutes, musicians, and counterculturalists. He was known for playing whole arrangements with one hand and started, play, uh, started writing his own songs, including one called, I Love Being Drunk. He occasionally played his musical accompaniment for traveling circuses and freak shows. And let's be honest, if Reggie had been born 100 years later, he probably would have been in your Burning Man camp. In 1933, he wrote and composed the song that would ultimately become Gloomy Sunday. The first version of the song was actually more bleak than the one that got popular. Originally, the title was The World Is Ending. You're not supposed to laugh at that, you sick freaks. <laughs> so the lyrics in The World Is Ending were about despair caused by war. Reggie's version ended with a prayer about mortal sins, appealing for God's forgiveness. Of course, this wasn't just the result of Reggie's melancholia or depression. Remember the time period here. He wrote the song as he was living firsthand through the rise of fascism and the Nazi party in Europe. No idea what that feels like. Too, too soon, really? Oof. So, <laughs> too late indeed. So as a bohemian Jew, he probably really did feel like his world was ending. But the lyrics that would eventually be translated into English and become the most popular version of the song were not penned by Raju. We have this guy, Laszlo Javor, to thank for that. Because when he heard the song, sure, an ode to the death of free Europe is good, but hear me out. What if it was about the protagonist wanting to kill themselves out of the, after the death of their lover? This guy was a real blast at parties. Anyways, Reggie didn't have much time to mull over which version of the song was better because being that he was Jewish and being that he lived in Hungary during Nazi occupation during World War II, he was promptly arrested and sent to a labor camp. Spoiler alert, he did survive. No, wow, no cheers for surviving a labor camp, but you guys are all over the place tonight. So it was during this time that the definitive version of Gloomy Sunday would be recorded by none other than Billie Holiday. Her version uses Laszlo's later lyrics, including the heartbreaking verse, angels have no thought of ever returning you. Would they be angry if I thought of joining you? Holiday's recording of the song became pretty popular, but maybe popular is the wrong word. 
Because while it did enjoy a wide distribution and recognition for its beautiful, haunting melody, there was an undeniable sadness that you just couldn't ignore. This led the BBC to ban Billie Holiday's version of the song from being broadcast, saying that it was, quote, detrimental to the wartime morale. That ban was eventually lifted in 2002. <laughs> this is also around the time when the song started to become linked with individual suicides in Hungary. Rumors started to circulate about a shopkeeper in Budapest who killed himself and left a note that quoted Laszlo's lyrics. A teenage girl was believed to have drowned herself while clutching a piece of the sheet music. This urban legend was bolstered by an article in Time magazine that was light on verified truth, but heavy in speculation that Gloomy Sunday was the sole source of a spike of suicides in Hungary. Poor Reju did not take this lightly. He's quoted as wondering, have I become the poet of the suicidal? It depresses me greatly to know that this became the fate of the song. I do not want success at such a price. From all of the attacks in the press, I'm starting to feel like a murderer. To add insult to injury, because Reju never traveled to the US, he was unable to collect royalties from Holiday's recording of the song. He lived out his life in poverty. And honestly, I feel like he was right to feel like he was being unfairly attacked. Remember that this song gained popularity during some of the bleakest times that Europe and the world have ever seen. It's also a fact that Hungary has had, ha, had, a, uh, had a higher suicide rate per year when compared to neighboring countries. And there's a hypothesis that high suicide rates among finno uyghur cultures, past and present, might be linked to a gene that predisposes some members of these populations to suicidal behavior. A little bit of science. I read half of the paper and didn't have time to finish it. There is an actual scientific paper on this, so. Half science. <laughs> so ultimately, tragically, Reishi became a part of that statistic. In 1968, he flung himself from the window of his apartment. Amazingly, he survived. <laughs> but he later strangled himself in his hospital room. His obituary in the New York Times ended with the final line, that read, Mr. Shresh complained that the su success of Gloomy Sunday actually increased his unhappiness because he knew he would never be able to write a second hit. So does listening to this song actually cause people to kill themselves? No, because that's not how this works. That's not how any of this works. And yet people still feared the song and what listening to it might trigger. But if our actions are dictated by song lyrics, then our world would look very different. <laughs> if the choices that I make were bound by the music that I listen to, then I would light a cop car on fire every time I heard fuck the police. I would put on the cramps and spend the rest of my days getting fucked up. And given the amount of Tom Waits that I listen to, I should by all accounts be a destitute train hopper with a banjo. But I am none of these things. Because music doesn't trigger actions. It triggers emotions and feelings. And yes, <laughs> Emotions can be terrifying. <laughs> Feelings are scary. Immersing yourself in sad bastard music is, for long amounts of time, is probably not the greatest idea if you're already feeling fragile. Ask me how I know. So the scapegoating, banning, and urban legends about this suicide song give us the first modern example of a moral panic over popular music. It's a fear that we've seen expressed over and over. You probably remember the more recent examples of this, like with Marilyn Manson being wrapped up in the Columbine school shootings, or Ozzy Osbourne being taken to court over his own suicide song. But the truth is that it wasn't a fair judgment when it happened to Reju, and it wasn't a fair judgment to make against musicians now. 
Because what you're saying when you ban a song like Gloomy Sunday isn't, I'm afraid of what might happen. What you're saying is actually, I'm afraid of what I myself may be capable of. I'm afraid of not having control. I'm afraid of the depths of my own emotions and how I may feel. These are reasonable fears, but to leave them unexamined is dangerous too. Go out, listen to sad songs, sit with those feelings, and know that you are not alone. So I'd like to raise a glass to sad bastard music, the sad bastards who make it, and the sad bastards in all of us. <laughs>